Okay, this video picks up right where the last one left off. I'm actually having to re-record this part because I had some problems with the video. But I was just saying that we've entered the point of our journey where the Earth is no longer the dominating gravitational body. That's indicated down here where this is turned from green to red. So now what I want to do is bring up a map MFD and make sure I'm referencing the moon, which I am. And then I'm going to go to display parameters set mod to put that on orbit plane and hit OK. Now one thing Transx MFD inherits the base information from Map MFD, so I've got Brighton Beach selected. Therefore, Transx will give me information to the base based on the fact that I've got this base selected. However, sometimes uh, Transx, uh, for lack of a better term, or for lack of better understanding, it forgets the fact that you've selected the base. So I'm going, if you look over here, you can see I don't have the off-plane distance. So when I'm, I'm going to click Target, and even though I've already got the base selected, I'm going to select it again. And you'll notice over here, when I do that, I now have off-plane distance, and it also put that uh, perforated yellow line right there. And the reason I need this information is so that I can make this mid-course correction and bring my off-plane distance relatively close to zero. I don't actually want to bring it all the way to zero necessarily for the fact, again, that as we move through space, um, the variables change, so I want to bring it as close to zero as I can while leaving enough room for whatever fluctuations I'll have between now and the time I get to the moon. So I just have to work with the variables because I don't know what that's going to be at this point. So I'm going to bring TransX up on this side again. Turn on maneuver mode. And typically to make changes to the plane you would do, especially if you're in orbit around the body already, which I'm not. I'm not currently in orbit around the moon. I'm on my way to the moon, but I'm not in orbit around it yet. But normally when you're in orbit around the body, obviously the way to make a, a plane change is to, uh, you know, make a plane change. So the first variable that I'm going to work with in TransX is the change plane variable. It may work, it may not. It's because of the fact that I'm this far out, it may be the case that I actually get more benefit out of one of the other variables. Um, but I'm going to start with plane change and just see what happens. So again, I, this is way off right now. It's over a thousand kilometers away from the base. So that means when, I, when I'm orbiting the moon at this current trajectory that I'm on, I would be a thousand kilometers away from from the base. And that's significant uh, because there's no no real atmosphere on the moon. So I can't come, you know, I can't land or come down into the moon and then glide like an airplane, which you can do on Earth if you're off if you're if you're missing the base on Earth, you can glide like an airplane to get there, but you can't do that on the moon. So it's really important when you get to the moon, when you get all the way there, eventually you want your off-plane distance to be a very low number. It'll never be 0.00, .00 but it will be something very small. You know, we want to get down to a few a few meters or a few hundred meters. So again, I'm going to start with a plane change and just see what happens if I add some positive plane change. 
and I can see that that's taking my off-plane distance down, but it's also doing some other bizarre things. It's, it's sending my minimum altitude through the roof, uh, and it also has my inclination now on a polar orbit. I'm just going to assume that's the wrong direction. So I'll go back to zero, and then try the other way. Let me do an adjustment here. Let's see what happens when I get the... So now I've got the off-plane distance down to two kilometers. Let me do a, an adjustment to just bring this all the way down to... At the moment, I, I do want to bring it to basically zero. And then I'm going to look at what changes um, once it's a very low number. So let's take a look. Okay, you can see here, now that I've got it almost to zero, it's counting down. So that means if I were to set this to zero, then assuming it's going to keep counting down, which it will, then I'm going to have a negative off-plane distance. So what I can do is I can compensate for this for this backwards count by setting the off-plane distance to and again, there's no way for me to know how quickly it's counting down, but I'm just going to say 20 kilometers sounds good. So I'm going to set this intentionally high. So that's uh, let me go with a stronger adjustment. That's one kilometer, that's two, three, four, five, six, counting up. And now we're off by about 20 kilometers, but we know that it's going to get lower as we get closer to the moon. And if it would be great, it would be fantastic if by the time we got to the moon, it was down to you know 100 meters or something. That would be that would be great. Um, most likely that won't be the case, but at least this gives us a starting point. So that's pretty good. Um, that requires 151 worth of delta. If I wanted to, I could reset this and put it to zero. And then, in fact, let me just go ahead and do it just to show <clears throat> how how you need to think when you're working with transex. So I'm just going to make a mental note. Negative 151 gives me the off-plane distance that I want. But maybe I'm thinking I can get better results by using one of the other variables. <clears throat> because sometimes that is the case that you know you can get you can correct your you can sometimes correct your off-plane distance using outward and again that's just because of the fact that we're at the mid-course correction point and, and the different changes in velocity at different angles can have impact on things that wouldn't normally have an impact if you were already in orbit around the body. So let's go to let's let's look at outward real quick and see if that does anything for us, uh, plus or minus. So I'm going to hit some plus, adding a bunch of uh, positive outward, and that is bringing it down, but um, it's a ton of outward compared to what we had before. So that's no good. Let's try the other direction. Let's go negative outward. Make an adjustment. Uh, that's no good either. So it looks like we got to go a lot more negative than that. An adjustment here. Yeah, that's not helping either. So. We'll skip outward adjustment. And the last variable is the prograde velocity. It's possible that that could help our off-plane distance as well. So we'll just play around with it and see what happens. Because as I'm making these changes, these are just what-ifs. I'm not locking anything in. So I can play around with these settings until I find something that works. So I'll add a bunch of positive prograde just to see 
Yeah, that does absolutely nothing for my off plane in that direction. And I didn't really think it would. So let's try the other direction, and that just makes everything way crazy wrong. So that's not what we want. So the prograde, or rather the um, plane change, is the winner. It's the right variable. And it was uh, negative 150, I believe. So there's our 20 kilometers. Knowing that it's going to count down. But I can also see here that my minimum altitude is now unacceptable. No matter what happens, if it goes up or down, this is just bizarre. Uh, that's, that's not going to work. So now I need to work with the other variables to bring down the minimum altitude. And one thing that can happen is as you adjust the other variables, they can also change this variable in an undesirable way. So sometimes you have to go back and forth between one, uh, or between two variables, and sometimes you even have to go back and forth between all three of them in order to finally get what you want. So this is sort of what I call the uh, dialing in process. So I'm going to go back to outward first, and I'm just going to see what happens if I add some outward. Okay, that is sending my minimum altitude up, and I don't want that. Let me try the. Let me try prograde for or now because that didn't. The outward didn't seem to be doing. Didn't have a result. Didn't have anything. Didn't have a good impact on my. Uh, my orbital parameters that I want. So now let's. Okay, that's bringing down the minimum altitude. Okay, now let's check plane change again. And the other thing I want to look at is the inclination. This is getting to the point of be becoming a polar orbit, and I don't want that. So let me make some adjustments here on the plane change. That's getting steeper. Bringing down the off plane, but it's got my minimum altitude just way crazy. Okay, I'm gonna assume that something else can be used. Okay, so that's plane change. Let's go back to prograde. This dialing in process can take quite a while sometimes. Okay. Go back to plane change. I need to reduce this a bit. Oops. Had it on course. OK, 
So let's start with that. And now... That's getting a lot better. So now we've got an off-plane distance of 844 kilometers. Okay, now let's play the plane change a little bit more. Now let me add the outward variable into the equation and see what happens. Okay, that's not helping either one. That's actually making my altitude and my off-plane distance worse. Um, so let's... Okay, that's got my minimum altitude. Hmm. All right, we're going to reset that variable. Okay, so that's my minimum altitude, 164. Off-plane distance, negative 964. So let's go plane change. Okay, that's the wrong way. Oops. Okay, I see what we've got now, okay. So as I add more negative plane change, that's going to bring my off-plane distance closer to what I need, but I also, at the same time, need to make a change to the prograde velocity to prevent my altitude from getting out of control. Okay, and you can see also here as I'm adding a little bit of prograde, it's bringing my altitude down and it's bringing down my off-plane distance. And I already decided that I wanted an off-plane distance of uh, like 20 kilometers, or 20 something kilometers, because I saw earlier that it was going down. I don't know how much to error with the minimum altitude. I th this seems a little high. So let me... see if I can do some finer adjustments. Here. Okay, that brings the altitude down. Y you can just see, you know, going back and forth between these variables and sometimes it seems like the the solution's impossible but it's always possible it just is a matter of going back and forth back and forth plus and minus until you finally find the of uh, until you finally find what works and this is really close to uh, the final solution we've got an off-plane distance of only eight kilometers which is almost nothing i mean that's you know, right on the money, and again, it's counting down, so it's actually going to continually improve as I get closer. <clears throat> and the minimum altitude is 190, which is also very good, but I would like to know if this is going up or down. Uh, so let me just accelerate time by a factor of 10, and see if I can see any changes here. Actually, I can see the off-plane distance, according to this configuration, is actually going up. Um, and, and I can understand that, because when you, sometimes when you make multiple changes to the orbital parameters, then the one variable that used to be going down is now going up, and that's what's happening here. So now I want to bring the off-plane distance to a negative number, because, yeah, it's, it's going up. So, okay, that's good to know. Uh, let's go to a finer setting and bring the off-plane distance to negative 20.
Okay, I'm just going to hold this for just a second. Do a little bit of time acceleration again. Just a factor of 10. Okay, again, this is going... This is getting closer to zero, so this is good. The minimum altitude isn't changing. Okay, it's going down. All right. So this is getting closer to zero, and that's fine. This is getting closer to zero, but I want a minimum altitude that's going to be higher than this, because if this continues to go down all the way to, you know, one kilometer or zero or whatever, it's going to be too close to the surface or it's going to be impacting the surface and it's going to require yet another change. So I'd rather, you know, figure this out while I'm still out this far. So, um, I'm going to go back to prograde and we'll go to a really fine setting because we don't want to make changes that would be too radical here. Okay, that's going the wrong way. Okay, this is good. This is taking both variables in the direction that they need to go. Because again, this is counting the other way. It's getting closer to zero. And, and I want to raise this. So I'm going to set the minimum altitude to... Uh, say like 50 and then hopefully by the time I get you know closer to the moon that this will this will have come down by 20 kilometers because I certainly don't need or want a minimum altitude of 50 and this is probably getting a little a little too low so let me go back to the other variable go down to a finer setting and see if we can make this a little better without doing too much to our altitude. Okay, so our altitude's still going up, so I've got to make a note of that. Okay, off-plane distance is negative 27, so... Okay, now I'll go back to the other variable that will adjust the altitude. Getting these exactly how you want is an exercise in frustration sometimes. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, the prograde is having a lot of effect on the off-plane distance at this point. really close to what I want. Oops. I would say that's what I want. That gives me an off-plane distance of minus 17 kilometers and it's counting upwards closer to zero. And I got a minimum altitude of 57 kilometers and that's counting down, which is good because I would I don't want 57 kilometers, I want something more like 25. So they're now both variable both variables are going in the direction that I want them to be going in. 
finally. Okay, now, one thing to mention, if I haven't already mentioned this, I forgot. When you turn maneuver mode on, the date that it selects is the date that it was the moment that you clicked to turn, to turn maneuver mode on. And quite a bit of time has passed since the time that I turned maneuver mode on and now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click reset. And when I click reset on the time, it's going to set the time to right now. And that's going to have some small impact over here, hopefully small. But I know I, I know this is going to happen, so that's okay. So you'll see these numbers change here as I reset this. And that was a little more of a change than I was hoping for, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more adjusting. So I'm going to go ahead and move the date, uh, the time I should say, forward. And I'm going to move it forward by just a little bit, not much at all, just enough that I can basically plan to make this burn in, you know, three to five minutes from now. So that's 61.94, and uh, we'll just make it 6200, nice even number. And now I do need to make some small adjustments here again to get these going back in the direction I want. Again, I want an altitude of like 50 something. Okay. That's good. I'm happy with this, so now I can click VW and I've got this all you know my target, so now I can rotation. Switch to rotation. One thing that's difficult here is trying to figure out which direction to rotate. Honestly, I don't know how to figure it out. I just go in this direction. I just choose a direction until the green X is on one particular alignment. Like right here, it's coming up to this left side. Now that it's on this point, I'm going to do a yaw rotation. And I'll just make it yaw until it comes around. And it may, it may go completely around one direction and back around the other way before it's correct. But that's, for me, this has been the easiest way to get the X centered when I have no direction, when I have no idea which way to go. I get it to one of those cardinal positions, you know, here, 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 or here, and then rotate accordingly. Okay. Coming up on the burn in 45 seconds. Go ahead and warp time ahead slowly. Okay, let me straighten the X out just a little bit more. This is a small burn, uh, 50, so I don't really need to go to full main engines. I'll use Control Plus. Translation. Good enough. Anytime you get to the 0, 0.00, I'd never worry about those last four digits because it's such a very tiny 
amount of delta V. I would say maybe even 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 is fine, but that last little bit, you will drive yourself insane trying to get that right, and you'll never get it. Because as you move through space, subtle variations in your orbit will make this change constantly, so you'll never get it exactly down to zero. It's not possible. So I'm going to click view a couple times to get over to maneuver mode var to get to this and when I turn maneuver mode off remember this is going to change now hopefully it won't change much yeah very little very little change okay now I'm quite happy with the way this is set up now if this continues to go down as I get closer to the moon uh, t it continues to getting closer to zero I should say and if this can drops a little bit more, that would be the ideal situation for this mid-course correction. So let me bring orbit MFD up. So we're at 0 0.47. And let's just go ahead to the moon. Uh, with any luck, we'll go all the way to the point where the moon is the strongest gravitational influence and then that will be the last time where we have to make any kind of mid-course corrections if this stuff wasn't accurate enough then I may choose to make another mid-course correction before getting you know to that to that point of the moon so let me just fast forward time here a little bit so that's coming down and that's going up. It's exactly what I want. So go to a thousand. Let me do this. Bring transex up over here on the side. And move my webcam over to the bigger view for now. Oops, let me bring up orbit on this side just so I can keep an eye on that. Okay, warping ahead. Okay. Now that we're getting closer to the moon, see our minimum altitude is rapidly increasing. This is not what I want to be looking at. So, another mid-course correction is certainly in order. Okay, I'm going to bring up Transex.
I'm going to get a little closer to the moon before I do any corrections. Because this is going up, but it's already so low. But I do have a feeling it's going to continue climbing higher than I'd like. And the off-plane distance is coming down. So the, it's good. But this is going to be... I just have a feeling this is going to be higher than I really want. But if it's... Okay. See, the off-plane distance is almost at zero now. And the minimum altitude is getting like 40. So I would say this is a good time to do another mid-course correction. So we've got the off-plane distance obviously counting up. So that would mean if we make a mid-course correction and make the, the off-plane distance to a negative number, or I'm sorry, positive, because it's counting down. So if we make the if we make the off-plane distance, you know, 15 kilometers, maybe even 20, then as we continue to go forward, it'll continue counting down. And then the opposite with the minimum altitude, it is. Is it going up or down? I lost track. It's going up, so if I make the minimum altitude like 5 kilometers, then hopefully it will gain the other 20 kilometers. Alright, so let's do this. Transx, maneuver mode on. Go through the variables. And the first thing take a look and see what a little bit of plane change does for us. And let me see again. I want to make the plane change a positive number. Okay, that's the wrong way. Okay, that's 22 kilometers. And at the rate that it was going by, I'd say that's probably not too much. Now I want to bring the minimum altitude down because it's counting up. I believe outward will be the best variable for that at this point. And I want to bring it down, that's right. Okay, so... I'm basically going to put it right on the surface. <laughs> Cuz by the at the rate it's counting up, I think that'll be I think that'll be fine. So that's good. Now I'm going to do uh the date reset first of all, reset the date to make it match exactly what it is right now. Now with a little bit of hyper, I can move the date forward just a few clicks just to give me time to set up the maneuver. Okay, that's all good. Now view. Rotation. And get the green X to one of the four main positions like that. Now use uh, up down rotation just to get it to go the other way. Now it's going to circle all the way around. Now it's going to come down. And 
you can see this is an extremely tiny delta V burn. This can all be done with translation thrusters. Oops. A little bit too much rotation there. Translation. And again, 0, 0.00 is good enough. Back to maneuver mode. Maneuver off, and when I turn it off, again, this will update. Minimal updates. So now we are IM ready to coast a little bit further to the moon. I have to change my webcam hotkey so they don't keep bringing up other stuff. Okay, now. Actually, instead of this MFD, let me have this MFD up on this side. You can see the minimum altitude is increasing like I wanted, and the off-plane distance is coming down like I wanted. Will it be enough? I don't know. Okay, we are now <clears throat> in the gravitational field of the moon. The HUD, the heads-up display, changed from orbit sun to orbit moon. So we're getting really close to the moon. In fact, we're only 12,000 seconds away from perilune, or lunar periapsis. I'm just debating if I want to make another small mid-course correction with regards to the altitude and the off-plane distance. <clears throat> 